All right, guys, so let's get started. This is our uh, level up session. And today's topic is gonna be all about creating video content. Um, it's the big thing right now. It's something that you know we talk about a lot here in the office of you know creating content and being able to build your brand and being able to showcase yourself as you know the go-to realtor, the knowledgeable person in your community on social media, all that good stuff, so that people um, feel comfortable reaching out to you and feel confident reaching out to you about you know buying, selling, financing, all those different things. Um, so that's really the the premise and and the goal behind it. Um, and really what this is going to be, guys, this is going to be a framework, you know, with video content, you know, you can spend hours and hours and, and go super deep with it, but I really want to give you guys the framework of it so that you can at least have the basic understanding of, um, what are some of the things you should be doing at a bare minimum to make your content more effective, right? There's certain strategy behind it, um, it's like, uh, like playing any sort of sport or, like playing golf. I don't know if any of you guys play golf, but I remember when I first started playing golf, like you don't just go out there. You can just go out there and try to whack the ball and hope that it goes straight or hope that it gets to the hole or whatever. But there's a lot of strategy behind playing golf from how you hold the club, from the wind, um, the different types of clubs that you use, like the setup, right? All those different things so that when you finally do go to swing the ball, to swing the club, you have a better chance of, of hitting that ball more effectively and making it either go further or getting it closer to the target, closer to the goal. So that's the same thing with video. Of course, you could just pick up your, you know, your iPhone or if you have a camera, whatever it might be, and just start shooting video. But there should be some sort of strategy that you're following, following uh, behind that to make it more effective and get the maximum out of every single piece of content that you that you create. So that's really what this is about, guys. It's the outline. It's the framework. And um, we're going to cover some some points. and. This way, you guys going forward, when you make your next video, you can start thinking of these things like, hey, am I incorporating these different things to make it more effective? Um, and feel free to stop me, guys. Um, I have an outline that I'm going to kind of go through and give you some examples and we'll kind of talk. But this is you know, meant to be also interactive. So if you guys have questions, um, feel free to put it in the chat. Feel free to raise your hand and we'll answer any questions for you guys as we go. Um, so let's start off. Go ahead and pull up this document that I created. And this will be available in the Google Drive also. Um, I always like to start off with mindset, guys. So just kicking, kicking off, we'll start off with the mindset here when making video. Um, the biggest thing that I can tell you guys when you're making video is that you have to change your mindset around video. Um, the reason you make video is is not just because Enrique is telling you to, Enrique is saying, hey, you guys got to put out more video content. It's because at the end of the day, you need to think of yourself as a marketer, right? Although we're real estate and mortgage professionals and that's the license we have and those are the courses we took and that's, you know, we're certified with the state or, or the country, you know, for our licenses. Um, that's just the formality, right? Like that's, just how you had to get your foot in the door with this business. But at the end of the day, you need to think of yourself as a marketer. How do I market myself effectively um, so that people say, hey, Yesenia, that's the person I see. That's the person I want to go to when I'm ready to buy or sell or my or Manny or whoever it might be. Um, that's what it is at the end of the day, right? Is how do you attract people to to hit you up, to call you, to refer you and stuff like that. And that's where the marketing comes into play. Um, so the best marketers out there, guys, the ones who constantly have people's attention, the ones who get constant engagement, the ones who people are always commenting on their stuff, always seeing them, whether it's like the best video you've ever seen before, or whether it's just more, they're just consistent and they're always putting something out and there's always people tuning in. Those are the people who consistently win. Those are the people who always have repeat and referral business. Those are the people who attract business to come to them. Um, so I want to start off with the question, guys, is who are some awesome marketers that you follow, not just in our industry, but maybe people you follow on social media or people that you tune into quite often? Um, put those in the chat. Like, who are some people that you follow? And you're like, man, like their stuff is really good. Like, I love their stuff, or I love watching them, or I love listening to them. It could even be on a podcast, it could be video. 
It could be maybe the written material. Let's get everyone to put, type in at least one person in the chat. So go into our, our chat here and who's one person Whitney Simmons, Veronica Campos. Well, you guys are gonna give me some ideas of people I can follow because I've never heard of these people. Brandon Morenin, Glenda Baker, Tiffy Cooks. What's a mortgage at my let podcast. Okay, I'm gonna um, call on somebody. Um, Alessandra, can you um, mute yourself real quick? Yes. So Veronica Campos, I don't think I know who that is, but um, why is she awesome? What do you like about Veronica Campos? Like, give me some, some context behind that. I look up to her just because in her first year in real estate, she didn't sell anything. Um, now she's selling like 10, 10 homes a month. And I don't know, that inspired me a lot, actually. And then she coaches with Tom Ferry. So she, I think her coach told her like to post a lot. So I've been seeing a lot of content, content from her. So I don't know, I feel really inspired by her. Got it. So part, what I hear from you is the success, right? Like you've seen her success. She went from not selling, now she's selling a bunch. So. Her results are inspiring to you, but what is it about her posts? Like, is there a particular way or a feeling you get when you watch her posts or her videos? Um, what would you say in particular about her posts or the way she does her content? Mm, she's consistent and she does give like good inf um, information for first time home buyers. So I sometimes even go and look to like learn <laughs> Um, some things and tips from her. Okay. I'll take yeah. So you feel like she's consistent. You always yes. see her and she's putting out some good information and you're learning stuff, even though you're in the business, you're learning stuff from her that you can now maybe use with your clients. Yes. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. Um, let me pick one more. Um, Liliana, tell me about Glenda Baker. I don't know. I don't think I know who Glenda Baker is. Um, I think she's based out of, um, I don't know, um, Atlanta. I like her because I like her content. It's almost like a, like a conversation. It's like, she doesn't look straight at the camera. She like is conversating with somebody like, like maybe next to her. And I, I like it because I feel like it's relatable. I feel like it's just like two people talking about real estate. She says she like talks about stories and things that happened. Um, I like I like that content. Mm -hmm. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. I if I follow her. Oh, I think I follow this lady. I didn't know her name was Linda Baker. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I feel like it's very relatable. I like her content a lot. Yeah. Yeah, she does. A lot of what she does, I, I remember her now, is it's a lot of storytelling. There's right. a lot of just like, it's just, it's not really her like saying, hey guys, here, I'm going to teach you something today. It's more like she's in the middle of a conversation. She's telling you a story and then you're kind of captivated by the story. Right? Correct. Yeah, I like okay. that a lot. Okay, cool. Um, so guys, the reason I asked that is because a lot of times when we're making content, um, like we know what we think is powerful. We know what, uh, you know, other people that we follow and why we think it's powerful and why we think it's good. But then when we make our content, sometimes like we just do the complete opposite, right? Because if you're feeling that certain way, when you see someone, if you're like, man, this is really good, or I like the way they, they frame the stuff, or I like how she talks about the stories, or I like that she's consistent. Um, those are people that we can model after, right? We can say, hey, that style, the way that resonates with me. Therefore, I would want my videos to, you know, be a little bit more in that style and stuff like that. So it's important to also follow people um, and get ideas and get inspiration. Not necessarily that you're going to be that person, but just, 
just get some ideas that you can now take into your, your content, right? Um, because there's a lot of, lot of awesome stuff. The best content I feel is that a content where like, after you watch it, you get like a feeling, right? Like you feel good or you're like, man, that was really good. Like, or I just really learned something or I never thought about it that way. Right. I don't think, um, what a lot of agents do I see is like, Hey, the three steps to get pre-approved for real estate, right? Step one, step two, like there's no feeling a lot of times when you see those videos. Right. So I want you guys to get more in tune with if I can go deeper in my videos, if I can say, hey, I, I really want to translate a message in my video, it's going to be a lot more powerful. Um, the next thing here, guys, what I wrote down is accepting the reality of really uh, delayed gratification, right? And I, I put brush your teeth. Um, it's like brushing our teeth, right? Like we know we have to brush our teeth every day. You don't only brush your teeth one time and then you have like good dental hygiene, right? It's something where you got to do all the time, every day, consistently. And if you do that every single day, then you're going to have great dental hygiene, right? If you br bl uh, brush and you floss and you go to the dentist and stuff like that, it's not like a one and done. Um, and for some reason, a lot of times, maybe subconsciously people think like, well, I made this video and I didn't really get any likes. Or I didn't really get any comments or I didn't really get anybody that hit me up. Therefore, it may not be working, right? So it, that's not the way it works with video content. That's not the way it works when creating your brand. It's something where people have to consistently see you all the time, right? And it keeps you top of mind with that person so that the day they are ready to you know, make a move or the day they hear about someone looking to buy or sell, you're hoping that you've made an effect on them and they want to refer them to you. Uh, Maudie, you raised your hand. What's your question, brother? Uh, just a quick comment. Um, so I've been, I've been consistently just trying to post a video. Like I know you said, like post one or two videos a week. I haven't really given myself a number. It's just like when I get an idea or when I have like 10 minutes to shoot something, I'll just get up and do it. Um, and I've been trying to see how much or just as many as I can possibly post. And what I've noticed is that like, I won't, I won't really get any likes or anything like at the beginning, but the next video I post, I'll see people go down the rabbit hole of my feed and like other posts that I've had um, posted previously. Yeah. So it yep. tells me that like they watched this one and now they saw the next one and then they saw the next one and then maybe the fourth one, they're like, oh shit, this is really good. And them liking it shows me that, okay, now I'm like attracting people to go down like the rabbit hole of my news or my feed or whatever it is. Um, yeah. That's what I want to say. <laughs> Cause like I don't get no. likes or like that but i i do get engagement through the other videos or other things that i posted and that's that's important you pointed that out right because we're not we're not in the game of likes so that's the thing you gotta i want you guys to all say this out loud likes do not equal deals likes do not equal money right so say that out loud to yourself we're not it's not a popularity contest right that's not what we're what we're creating content for right you can have a hundred or a thousand likes, right? Like who let's on social media, who gets the most likes? What posts get likes all the time or you get the most views or whatever. I think you guys can all say it, put it in the chat. All right. I'm going to say it. it's either the girl in the bikini, right? Or the pretty girl or the dude that's ripped with the shirt off or something like those are the ones that are going to get the most likes, right? Because that, that's all it is. It's the superficial, right? It's like, Hey, I, I saw something, I liked it or whatever, like, right. That's what it is. But with video content and creating your brand in your business, it's not about likes. It's about people saying, people seeing the message, right. And saying, Oh, that was good. And it's slowly you're making deposits into their mind. You're slowly planting seeds. You're slowly gaining mind share. You're slowly gaining credibility with somebody, right? It's just like some of you guys that have joined our team, right? And I lead a lot of the coaching and stuff like that. You didn't necessarily just join our team and see one coaching session that I did and said, oh, okay, Enrique knows what he's talking about. No, it's like, it's the consistency, right? Like I'm always pre preaching a message. We're always doing training. You see me show up all the time. You see me come in with ideas and then you see the success and all these different things we're having, all the wins. And then over time, you're like, okay, it makes sense. 
what they're saying. It makes sense what he's saying, right? And that's the same thing with content, right? It's something you just got to do consistently. So don't worry about the likes, nothing like that. Just worry about, am I giving a powerful message? Is this message speaking to someone? Is this message valuable to somebody? Um, a powerful message or powerful or valuable or educational message will always be a cool looking video. That's another thing I want to say, right? Is sometimes we have it backwards. We're going for like the looks and the cool factor. And maybe there's not a lot of uh, meat to that video, right? Now, if you have a powerful video with a powerful message and it's really, you know, it really speaks to someone and it looks cool, right? Because you maybe the editing or whatever the graphics or however you did it, then that's, that's, that's even better. Right. But you can't have one without the other. You can't just have a cool looking video or a catchy one or a funny one or a TikTok dance and not have something valuable behind it. Right. Because you're not going to, you're not going to impact people. So I want you guys always thinking value impact first, that's your first priority. And then like the cool factor, the editing, like the swag, the cool song on it, all those other little things. That comes second, right? Um, we're not in this to look cool, but you can look cool and you can put your swag and you can put your style on it as long as the message is powerful and valuable and it speaks to someone. So this first part is, is the mindset, right? I want you guys thinking like when I make videos, like I need to approach it from this sort of mindset before I go in. Because when you have that, then all the other stuff becomes really easy. Any questions on this first part of the mindset part? Cats and dogs, my kids, teams, workout video. All right. I like that you guys wrote, like, which one gets the most likes? My kids, cats and dogs, my workout videos, memes. Like, this is cool, too, because if you know there's certain things that grab people's attention, you can use those as attention grabbers, but then make sure you have a powerful message behind it. Right. So I know like when I put my daughter in a video, like I get way more likes. Right. But I know I'm not going for likes, but I might get more attention. Right. Because if someone sees my daughter in the image, they're like, oh, let's see. I haven't heard from her lately. Right. I see Enrique talk all the time, but let's see what Mila's up to. Right. So if I put her, but then I deliver a good message. Now I'm kind of getting more bang for my buck. Right. I got the, the attention on people and then now I get to the powerful message. All right. Let's move on, guys. The next part is going to be topics. And topics are what a lot of people struggle with. Like, okay, Enrique, it makes sense. I know why I got to do this. I understand the mindset. But how do I come up with topics, right? That's probably one of the hardest parts. And sometimes we're overthinking how to come up with topics. Because in our mind, like, we're thinking it has to be this, like, elaborate, like, crazy, like, you know, something that I've never heard before or something that's never been done. Like we're trying to be different, but really it, it's, it's, it's not that right. It's a lot simpler than you think. So I want you guys, when you're coming up with a topic to always think value to the consumer um, over aesthetics, that's what we talked about before, right? What's the value. And the main thing guys is, is the second point here is what are people's pain points and what conversations are you having with your clients right now? Like those are some of the best topics that you can come up with is what are things that people are people actually telling you right now when you're meeting with them or when you're talking to them over the phone or when you're showing them a home, because I guarantee you that same pain point or that same concern are concerns that other people are having. Right. So you also got to be conscious of like what's going on right now in the marketplace. Liliana, what do you got? Oh, unmute yourself. Sorry. Um, I wanted to add to that. Last week, I was on a Zoom with like a few people that are pretty big on TikTok. And um, they've gotten a lot of engagement and they've actually closed deals from it. Um, so I guess the whole point is like uh, they do videos on TikTok and leads them to their Instagram. And then to Instagram, it leads to their DM. And then from their DM, it leads to like their email. And then like it's like a whole chain of how it happens. But the one of the girls is like really successful on it. Um, she mentioned because somebody asked her, like, uh, if you were starting off again, because, you know, she kind of blew up, what would you do? And she said, um, 
Uh, she's like the last five questions that your clients have asked you make a video about each topic because if those like and it's actual stuff that actual clients have asked you then if it's a concern or they're wondering about it other people probably have a similar question um and that's how she kind of started like I think the first video she ever did was about like credit scores you know like when you go when you have a co-signer a lot of people think that if they because they have a higher credit score and yours is low that they're going to go off of theirs and they don't that was like the video that made her go viral because I guess people didn't know that um and I was I remember when I saw the video I was like crap I should why didn't I think of that I it's something people don't know and people a lot of comments like wait so you're telling me that if I buy with like my parents and their credits 800 they're going to go off of my low score and then it had a ton of interaction so yeah, yeah. that was her yep. tip do videos on the last five questions that clients have asked you. And I thought it was like really brilliant. No, and that that's exactly the point here. And that's that's really good yeah. insight there. Like you have examples of people who are getting a ton of engagement and getting you know deals off of that. And that's what they're using, right? And trust me guys, like this stuff that I'm coming up with, this is not stuff that I just made up. This is stuff that I've learned from other people, right? Other people that I follow, other people who have educated me other people who are, are doing really good content and getting a lot of success with it. So um, to Liliana's point is if there's things that are working for other people, there's like a lot of the foundational things that are working for a lot of the people, right? Like once in a while, someone's doing like something completely out of the norm. But for the most part, a lot of people are just doing the same thing. They're just doing it in their own style, with their own voice, with their own flavor to it, right? So that leads to the next topic right here. Um, is R&D. R&D, guys, is I want you guys to remember this forever and ever and ever and ever in your business. And I'm going to say it again. R&D stands for research, research and development normally, but in our business, it stands, off, it stands for rip off and duplicate, right? What that means, guys, is nobody owns anything in our business, right? Unless it's like copyrighted or something, like you can't steal someone's name or logo or anything like that. But I'm talking about like a topic or a way to market or anything like that. People don't have copyrights on any of that stuff, right? So if you see someone do something cool or like they made a video on a certain topic that was really powerful, you can just take that same exact thing and just reproduce that in your own words, in your own terms, in your own flavor, your own style, right? So if you see something good, steal it and make it your own. In fact, a lot of like the big hitters, like in our group and our coaching groups, they encourage, they go here, I'm just going to send it to you, R&D it, like just rip it off and duplicate, but change the style, put your own flavor, do it in your own voice, do it in your own words. But the topic guys is, it's not, uh, it's, it's not rocket science. They don't own the topic, right? Like why you need to understand credit scores and how they affect your mortgage application. That's not something that someone has a patent on or a copyright on, right? Like you can make that video, they can make that video. You guys all have different audiences. So you see something cool, write it down, steal it, reproduce it, make it your own. A lot of the videos that I come up with guys, I took these ideas straight from other people. And I have like a collection, like I just constantly write topics, topics. I have a whole note section. That's, that's what I'm gonna talk about soon. But a whole, a whole note section in my phone that's just called video topics. And every time I'm anywhere or I think of something or I'm at the gym or I'm in the bathroom or I'm in the shower or whatever, and I'm like, that would be a good topic. Or I watch someone else's content and they say something really powerful. I'm like, that's a good video topic. Boom, I just plug it into my phone. And now I have like a hundred different topics and I just slowly check off the boxes. And then I'll, in some of them I may not do for a while because maybe it's not appropriate with what's going on right now, or maybe it's something that I'm gonna save for later or a certain time, but R and D guys, write that, write that down. Um, the next thing here is speak to those, uh, those topics and become the problem solver, right? So remember, if you wanna look valuable to someone, like you have to address some sort of problem or some sort of issue, right? If someone has a pain point like, the whole credit score thing that Liliana just talked about. There's someone going through that credit score thing right now, right? Where maybe they applied with their co-borrower, the co-borrower had a higher credit score and they ended up going with the lower one, right? That's a pain point for that person. That's gonna be a pain point for a lot of people. So when you could speak to that pain point and then give some advice around how to fix that, 
or how to solve that problem or tips, something that you can do to prepare for that, you're going to look like the hero, right? So when you know there's a common problem or a common pain point and you can speak to that and you can give someone a solution on how to solve that and what something that they can go out and do right now, that is how you create a lot of value with your audience. Um, any questions on these first couple points? Real quickly in the chat, right? So that we can also gain some stuff from here is, um, I like how Mahdi said, just got the idea for my next video. Thanks, Lily. There you go. Um, what are some conversations you're having with your clients right now? Like some of their pain points right now, or like, even if it's just a specific thing, like, hey, my client brought this up the other day. And I never, you know, it's something I haven't talked about in a while. Write those in the, uh, in the chat right now. Everyone just write one thing that you've talked to someone recently about. It could be a specific thing. It can be a general topic. Just write something right now because this is a good way for us to get ideas out as well. Um, and you'll see right here, like there's, there's probably topics right here, right now that you can go make a video on. I know for one of my clients, um, one of the sellers, it was, they have family living in the property that's been living there and they need to get them out. Um, so that's the whole issue right now, trying to get them out of the property so that we can go in there and clean the house up and get it sold. All right. So how do you deal with that? Right. Are there different ways you can deal with that? Different ways you can, uh, get someone out of a property. Um, Jason wrote down sellers giving a credit to closing costs to buy down the rate, right? That's a hot topic right now. It's probably something more and more people are talking about right now because people are getting creative and figuring out ways to get the rates down. Interest rates are too high. How soon can I refinance if the rate drops? Great question. How about even like just going even a step further with the seller giving credit for closing costs to buy down the rate? Like what is a uh, interest rate buy down? How does that work? Like how much do you pay and how much lower does that make your rate go down? And what does the math look like behind that? To me, that, that'd be a, a really, some really good information. Um, Something I saw someone do right now is uh, one of my buddies, Wilson, I shared his video. Um, he was talking about why it, why it still may be a good time to sell, even if you're going to get a lower price, because if you're going to buy another home, you're going to get a lower price on the next purchase. Right. And he was like, it still, it makes sense to sell, even if you're not getting as much as you were before, as long as this, as long as you're going to buy another property, because that property you'll be able to get at a lower price as well. So a video on that, right? But if you're just going to sell and put the money in the bank, maybe it doesn't make sense. Maybe it makes sense to keep that property. Okay. Um, this next point right here, guys, is speak to someone and not to everyone. Um, facts tell, stories sell. So what I mean by that, guys, is sometimes when we're making our videos or when we're making content, I see a lot of people just trying to make them too general where they're saying, Hey, I want this to speak to like the masses. Um, you got to remember is that one video isn't going to like turn your business around. Right. If it was, if that was the case, right. Like if one good video, like turned your business around, which is really, really unlikely that you go viral or something like that, then yeah, you can make one general video and say, okay, I'm going to make this one video and it's going to kind of apply to everybody. And like, I'm going to throw it out there and I have 2000 followers and like, it's going to make an impact with all 2000. That's not how it works. Right. So I say that because when you make your videos, don't be afraid to make your video really specific on a specific part of the process or a specific part of the business or a specific tip and just go deep to that tip, even though it may not apply to every single person following you but you're speaking to someone in your audience who might run into that, right? So speak to someone and not to everyone. Um, and when you have that mindset, then you're not also going to try to be like everyone else, right? You're not trying to please every single person on your video, 
right? You're trying to really just give a powerful message that's going to resonate with someone. And if five different people watch your video, that one video, there's going to be five different responses, right? Someone might be like, damn, that was solid. That was really, really good. Like that really helped me because I'm going through that right now. Someone may be like, yeah, that was a good tip, but you know, I'm, I'm not really, that's not really applying to me. You know, someone may be like, Hey, like, eh, like, yeah, another video by, by Maori. Uh, I'm not really looking to buy. So I'm not really tripping right now. Off anything he says. Right. Um, so it's always going to be a mix like that. Right. So if that's the case, then put like, put your all into making that video. Great. You know, because you know, like at any given time, it's going to resonate to someone. Now that person who wasn't looking to buy or sell, may come back to that video later when they are looking to buy or sell. And at that point, now it resonates with them. Now they're like, oh yeah, this is really good. And now it applies to me, right? So we don't want to try to like, like do like blanket types of videos, right? I would have, I would try to avoid blanket types of videos. I would try to just be real and honest and go into one specific topic and be more consistent with putting out more videos. Um, and then the facts tell story sell part, um, the same way, like Liliana said that Glenda Baker, like she likes her stories, you know, because she's telling a story all the time. So there's a lot of power in telling a story, right? Like you can say, Hey guys, like a lot of people are asking me this, and this is what's going on. You can explain it. But then when you can go like into a story, I had a client one time and you kind of give a whole context of the client. Maybe you, the client is anonymous, right? You don't say who it is, but you tell the story of what happened, why it happened, what ended up happening, all those different things. It really can drive the point home and it really can make it resonate with that person at a deeper level, right? So it's one thing to say like, hey guys, the interest rates are going up and you, know, you really got to think about whether it makes sense to buy or sell. Like that's just a fact. But when you can say that and then say, let me give you an example. I had my client, and this is something we were looking at and we mapped it out and we did different scenarios. And what we found is that it made sense for her to wait a little bit more until she could save more money and afford the payment or no, or what we found that is that even though the rates went up, she was going to be able to buy this property at a lower price. She was still able to afford the payment. She was able to lock in and she has, you know, and you go into the details of that, it's going to help really, really sell that point and drive that point home. Questions on this right here, guys? Any of this so far? Give me one quick second. Okay, next thing here, guys, for coming up with topics. Um, don't try to put too much info in one short video, right? Remember, if it's a reel or if it's like a short form video where it's just like a one minute or one and a half, there's really only so much you can say in that video to make it powerful, right? Like if it's a one and a half minute reel, because I think like IG reels are now one and a half minutes, you can't put like the eight points to buying a home in a, in a one and a half minute video, right? Like it's, it's going to be too much information for that amount, of, that amount of time. Does that make sense? Like if you put too much information and it's only a short form video, you're going to lose some people, right? They're not going to be able to fully grasp the information. So you can either like have shorter videos and just really hit it home with like one point. Maybe like if you're going to do like the three steps to buying a home, but you make three different videos, one on step one, one on step two, one on step three. So you have time to really go deep with those. That's going to be a lot more effective than just trying to do all three of those points in one short video. The other thing you can do is you can even make like a longer video, right? Where you go into everything and then you can chop that up into shorter videos as well, right? So that people can consume it and really grasp the information. Um, I always recommend one to three points maximum per video. Go deep, like I said, even one point, like if it's just one thing that you want to talk about and just going deep with it in a story and given examples, that's going to be a lot more effective than a three-point video that has no details behind. Um, like I told you guys earlier, keep a list of topics in your phone, your notes, because sometimes topics come up at different times, right? You could be driving, you could be at the gym, you could be somewhere, or you can have watched something else and you get a hot topic. 
have that place where you keep all your topics. So what I want everyone to do now, if you haven't done it, a simple way, like I said, is just go in your note section. And you can see in my note section right here, I'm gonna show you, I don't know if you guys can see this. I have a note section just called video topics and they're just all bullet points. And if you see me scroll, you can see like, these are all topics. A lot of them don't have a check mark next to them because I haven't made videos on them yet. I got hundreds of topics in here, guys. Like, this is my collection, right? So if you don't have that yet, I want you guys to create a section in your notes. I like the notes because my phone is always on me. So like I can be anywhere and boom, just plug it in. And then when I go to film video, I can go back and say, okay, what's the next topic that I got to choose from? And then just check them off the box. Um, here's another thing that I learned today, actually. was on, I was on a mastermind earlier today. And there's a website called answerthepublic.com. And I guess it's a website where you can go on there and you can just punch in um, like buying a home and it'll give you like all these different topics. It will auto populate like hundreds of different topics about buying a home that you can make videos on. So answerthepublic.com, check that out, play around with it. But if you're someone that has trouble coming up with topics, this is your guide right here. Enrique, um, but, Enrique yeah. let me jump in real quick. So, so something that, again, I, I, it's not something that I really learned on the mastermind today. It's something that just kind of, it's been re repeated a few times is that, you know, just going back to like, when you're trying to find content, I think it was a good exercise. What you did was we kind of posted in here who we follow. And I think it's, it's easy for us to, to just see who we're following, see who's out in social media that we kind of gravitate to towards and we can just duplicate their content, right? I kind of want to really reinforce that because again, that was probably one of my biggest things was like, well, what do I got to talk about, right? Because the way we come, our mindset already feels like, or my mindset was like, well, everybody, everybody already knows this, right? But it's not true. Your audience does not know what you know about real estate or mortgages or, or whatever you're trying to market. So again, uh, first is definitely, you know, content is already out there. It's already been done, guys. You're, you're not going to make up something brand new. But what you can do is go ahead and, you know, R&D it and go ahead and put it in your own, in your own style, your own voice and your own audience, right? And I, th I think don't be afraid of doing that. And that's something that I think for me, it was, it was a hurdle because I'm like, shit, you know, everyone's already heard that already. But again, they haven't heard it from me and my audience hasn't heard it from me. So again, I think just, just kind of make sure that you are following people that you can R&D from and make sure you put it into your own voice and your own content. Yeah, definitely. And to kind of back up what Jason was saying, one more, I, I want to make a point is that even though you put out a video, let's, let's say everyone knows it, right? Or a lot of people know this information. They don't know that you know it, right? So even though you put out a video, video that you may think, well, this is not like super high level. The fact that you're putting videos out, just, just the fact that you're even putting out content already establishes credit, credibility with your audience. Then the fact that you're giving a powerful message, then the fact that you're consistent, like all those different things. And like Alessandra said, she likes that lady's videos because she's consistent. She's always putting videos out. There may be some videos that she puts out that all of Alessandra says, oh, I already heard that before, or I already heard Enrique talk about that or something. But the fact that she's consistent, it's someone now like that Alessandra can look up to and say like, hey, I want to be more consistent. So don't necessarily think that it's just the video that's going to resonate with people. It's the fact that you're putting it out there in the first place that establishes credibility with your audience. And like Jason said, they haven't heard it from you yet, right? They haven't heard it in your voice, right? They don't know that you know this. Right. So it's it goes a lot deeper, guys. The consistency is really the key. And that's building your brand over time. Like Coca-Cola is one of the most recognized brands in the world. Right. Like they can get creative or whatever with their commercials. Or whatever, but at the end of the day, they're just still selling Coca-Cola. Like the, the end of it, the product, it's still Coca-Cola. Right. It's not like they, it's a new Coca-Cola. It's not like it's a different Coca-Cola. Right. It, it's like they're still they're the brand. Right. Um, and they're just getting creative with it, right? So that's, it's just the consistency. All right, so I wanna go into like, we talked about the mindset, why you need to do video, 
some things to think about how you come up with your topics. Now let's talk about the physical stuff. Like, right. Like, all right, I know what I'm going to do. I know what my topic is. I understand why I need to do videos. Now, what are some tips on how to put out video and make it more effective when I actually physically do the video? Um, number one is going to be, um, lighting, good lighting and good audio, right? This does not mean you need lights and this does not mean you need, uh, microphones and like all kinds of gear, like your cell phone will do wonders at the very basic level, but just know how to use this so that you get the best lighting and the best audio, right? So number one, like a good tip is right now, like I'm in my kitchen, I'm sitting at my kitchen table and I have right here, I have my sliding door over here, right? My sliding door, it's shining on me, like kind of at an angle right here. So it's making my screen look well lit, right? The same thing with my phone, right? Like if I'm going to record a video on my phone, I want to position myself where the light is coming towards me. Sometimes maybe not directly at you, but even like at a side angle is good, right? As long as lighting is coming towards you and the lighting is not behind you, that's going to give you better lighting. Now, if I were to turn around right now and do this, this and have the light behind me, you see like it's making me look darker. It's like really distracting with the light behind me. I think I have my settings on um, on Zoom where it says adjust for low light. But if I take off the adjust for low light setting, watch. See how dark it made me look? I don't know if you guys can see that. I cast it a shadow. So the good thing about Zoom is Zoom will can light you up if you have low light. But you're not always going to be able to do that with your camera. So now that I turn this way, now that I have the light like facing towards me, it just makes me look a lot more lit up, right? That's just the basics, guys, right? Like at the very, very basic level, just position yourself where you have a decent lighting. Um, having lights on, on top of you, like if, if you're in the office and like the ceiling light is right on top of you, that's going to cast a shadow on you as well, right? So natural light is always the best. And then a step further, like if you have a ring light or if you use like some of those lights we have in the office, having the lights come to you, but you know, so they're not super, super bright and harsh, but good lighting just makes your video better because if, so, if it looks better in appearance, there's chances are people will um, engage with it more or they'll click on it more. It just gives a, a better professionalism. But remember, you can have the best lighting possible. And if you didn't do none of the above, like the content sucks or you're not saying anything good or it's a, it's something that's not a lot, not really valuable and you have good lighting, like it's not going to do nothing. Right. So these are just ways to enhance what you're already doing. Um, good audio. Maori, what's your question? More of a question of it's, it's not like on this, but it's, I just thought of it uh, about hashtags, but we can talk after like bring it up after. Yeah. We'll talk, we'll talk about hashtags in a second. Okay. On the distribution part um so good lighting good audio right like your cell phone will do great audio if it's just you like in a room and you're speaking directly to your cell phone it'll get good audio as soon as you go outside your your cell phone's going to pick up all the audio around you if there's people talking in the background if there's wind it'll pick all that up um so Sometimes I'll do videos here at my house and I'll just hold my phone and I'll just speak into the phone, but I'm in a quiet room. There's no one else here. Um, so the audio comes out pretty good when I'm just speaking right to it in front of it. If I go try to do this outside, it's not going to work that good. You're going to hear the, the wind and all that stuff. So um, this is where you can use things like your earphones, your AirPods, like your AirPods are really good. If you guys have AirPods, like these could be your microphones right here. Just plug your AirPods in, connect them, shoot your video. It's going to make your audio a lot better. Um, even the old school, I always keep my old school earphones on me because in case my AirPods go dead, um, I have these old school ones. But these old school ones with the mic works really well. Um, and that's as basic as I'm going to get, right? Like, because right now we're, you're not going to become professional video editors and video producers overnight. But at the very basic level, just know that try to position the lighting where it's good and just try to be conscious that you have good audio and there's not all kinds of background noise. That's going to make your, make your videos stand out. Um, and make sure that, the, that no one is distracted, right? Let's say you have a really good message, but the audio sucks and they can't really hear you. Now they're getting distracted by all the background noise, right? So you want to make sure that people are not getting lost. Your message is not getting lost because you have bad audio. 
Um, and then the last thing, guys, is be yourself. Speak how you speak, right? This is a challenge for a lot of people that first start doing video because in the beginning, if you're not that comfortable in front of the camera, you're going to try to sound like how you think you should sound, right? Raise your hand if you have like a professional voice that you put on. Like when you talk to clients, there's like a different voice that you put on, like a different way you speak than how you normally speak. My boyfriend makes fun of me for that. <laughs> okay. So what I want you guys to do is try to get away from that as much as possible, right? Like make sure you speak clearly, make sure you speak professional, but try not to turn on a different voice completely, you know, than like, if you sound like night and day, like when I talk to you Give us an example, Enrique. Give us your professional voice. Come on. You see it. So let's see. How much? It's hard because, I, because I've adjusted from that. In the beginning, it was different. And now, it, now I'm, I keep it a lot more just authentic. Let me, ask like, you, remember, <laughs> let me ask you guys. Let me ask you right now. Because, again, I mean, I haven't seen everyone on here do videos. But the ones I have seen... I pretty much like when I see Maudi, it seems like Maudi. I don't see like, you know, so I don't know, you know, and I know Enrique, like when you first started, I see, you know, you're kind of, you know, in a suit tie, you know, proper, probably reading something. Right. And now, you know, obviously you're way more natural, more freestyle from it. Right. So I, I think, yeah. and again, I'm older guys. So I'm like in my forties. So I feel that the people on this zoom call have it way more natural than someone like myself. Right. Um, and, and for me, I try, you know, I'm just kind of, my experience is I just try to talk exactly like I was talking with one of you guys in, in the office. Right. Um, yeah. but again, yeah, I mean, I don't know, Keith, because I don't see a lot of that with our team. I, I don't know if you are right. I know, I know we got to point that out, but is that, is that something you're seeing that someone's being a little more, um, like a professional voice? Some. Sometimes, yeah, sometimes. And it's usually with the newer people, the people who are just starting to do video content where they feel like they got to put on this persona um, and they're not fully, fully comfortable in their own skin yet, yet, you know, I guess, with the content. Uh, Maori, what were you saying? <clears throat> I was going to call myself out. Um, the last few videos that I've been doing, I, like the, la the last one I dropped was me being myself. Like straight up, I was like, I don't care. I'm just gonna deliver like I'm talking to Jason or anybody in the office. But the ones yeah. before that, I'm very like monotone, talking slow. And what I noticed is that I'm talking to a camera. So it's hard to talk to a person when you're speaking to a camera, right? Um, yeah. I would just visualize, like the last ones, I'm just gonna visualize somebody, like I'm trying to deliver them the message of buying or selling the house and why it's important. Um, and that last one was like, the delivery was fully me. The ones before that, it was me like talking like as a newscaster or something like very, I don't know, stiff, monotone. Yeah. Very slow speaking. Like, let me give you, <laughs> let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. My first videos and I'm, I'll put this in the Slack app so you guys can watch it because just for time. But you'll see my first video. I still have it because I have it and I go back to it to see how much growth that I've had. But my first video, I was like suit and tie. I was hella stiff. My shoulders were probably shrugged, right? And I was like, hi, I'm Enrique <laughs> with PRG Real Estate. If you are thinking of buying or selling a house, please feel free to reach out to me and I will be in touch. Thank you for watching this video, right? Like, it was so, and now it's like, hey, what's up, guys? It's Enrique, PRG Real Estate. Hey, I, I want to give you a point today. I'm going to tell you what's going on, blah, 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 right? Like, that's the real me, right? That's who you see anytime you meet me, right? So, Anna, what you got? I, I don't usually do a lot of, like, um, <clears throat> real estate-related content, but I do find myself, like, whenever I'm active on social media, like, on Instagram, I always make it seem like I'm talking to a friend. And everybody feels super comfortable with me because I make it seem like I'm talking to them specifically, which is where I get a lot of engagement. Um, and I think that's just something that everyone has to realize. It's most of these people who follow you are your friends and family. So just talk to them like you would as if you're seeing them in person. Yep. And the quicker you can get comfortable with that and the quicker you can get over that and stuff like that, the more authentic your videos will be and the more engagement you will get because someone will really see that, hey, this is a real message. 
It's not like super scripted, even though there's a script we're following, or maybe there's bullet points or there's an idea, yeah. but the more authentic, especially because like, like Anna said, a lot of your friends and family follow you. You don't want people to go, ah, look at Enrique trying to sound all professional, right? Like you don't want people to go, ah, like this guy, right? Like you want people to go like, oh, okay, that's just Enrique. Like that's the same guy I see at the barbecue, but he's like giving some really good information, right? Like that's what you want, right? You don't want them to see like, think like you're fake on social media and then you're a whole completely different person when they meet you, right? So be yourself, speak how you speak um, and just work on that. It does take time to work on that, guys. In the beginning, like you're gonna go through this transition, but the quicker you can say, hey, I don't give a shit. Like I'm just gonna speak how I speak with my imperfections, with my ums, with my ands, with my little slang here and there, with my accent, wherever I'm from, the quicker you're gonna just get more comfortable, right? And you're gonna be able to put that out confidently. Okay, we're getting close on time. So I'm gonna to try to get through as much as this as possible, but this can well be another session where we get to some of the other stuff. Shooting the content. So there's some preparation, right? Here's the thing, if you don't prepare, if you're not that good at video, and you don't prepare, it's gonna come off in your video, right? If you don't have like a, a guideline or bullet points or whatever that you're following, then you're more likely to mess up or fumble or anything like that, right? So, but I don't want you to over-prepare where you make this so like you make yourself nervous, right? So what I do is bullet points. I do bullet points. I don't write out the whole entire sentence that I'm gonna say. I just write the point and then I'm able to see that point and I'm able to talk about it. Right. And I'll make sure, obviously, like I know the information, I'll rehearse it. Or if I look at if I'm reading an article or if I'm pulling this information from somewhere, I'll make sure I study the info so that I know how to I know what to say. And it's in my mind. But when I'm actually about to do my video, I'll have literally a piece of paper and I'll write down three bullet points. I just make sure I hit those points. I'll say I'll write intro. I'll write bullet point number one bullet point number two, number three, or whatever, and then I'll write outro. And that's what I write. And then at least I have something I follow so that I stay on course. Um, check your lighting, check your audio. If you're doing it like on your phone or your camera or whatever you got, like do a little test shoot real quick. Hey, what's up guys, it's Enrique, blah, blah, blah. And then play it back and then just make sure like the audio sounds good, make sure the lighting was good. And then you say, oh, okay, shoot, I gotta move a little bit more this way, the lighting kind of sucked, or I gotta speak a little closer. Make those quick adjustments. And then don't overthink it, guys. Just shoot. Because if you already know the strategy, you already know the goal, you already know your bullet points, you already checked your lighting, then that's it. That's all you got to do. Just shoot it and be okay with some little fumbles, right? Like, remember, no one speaks perfectly. Even me, like, presenting, like, I say, um, I say, and, I fumble. I might say, oh, okay, that's not what I meant. I meant this, right? Like, that's perfectly fine because we're human. Um. And then always try to just do one take. This is the biggest thing. And this is gonna be hard, right? Because you have to be okay with it not sounding perfect, but it's gonna be real. If you try to only do one take, your first take, assuming you prepared, is gonna be the most natural. Every time you do another take after that, you're gonna be now thinking about where you messed up on or where you did this or where you did that. Right. And then when you start thinking, you're more focused on that than you are focused on actually recording the video. Right. So the more takes you do, you're just going to see it's going to get worse and worse and worse a lot of times. So I would always try to shoot for one take, no more than two or three takes. There could be a reason like you had to do more than one take. Maybe you were filming and someone walked in and totally messed up the audio. Then, yeah, you got to redo it. But if it's one solid take and you went through it, as long as you didn't like completely butcher it or like you didn't miss out like half of the bullet points, which you shouldn't miss that out if you wrote it down on the on a piece of paper, then you're fine. Just freaking get ready to upload that thing. All right. Um, last thing here. So now we're going to walk through just some of the stuff and we can we'll spend another session, guys, on actually um, part two of this training is going to be us rehearsing this and role playing this. Right now, I'm giving you the framework, but part two is going to be actually us rehearsing and role playing because I think that'll be really valuable. So this is how you build out your content. You got to have an intro and your intro should always start with some sort of hook or attention getter or the clickbait, right? This is like the topic that kind of summarize it all. This is how you get people's attention. So for example, if I was going to make a video about a market update, right, which are, which are videos that you absolutely should be making market updates. 
I wouldn't start off by saying, hey guys, today I'm gonna give you a video about a market update. I would come up with like a topic sentence or an attention grabber that describes what's happening in the market. And then I would say that first. So an example would be like, buyers are facing this uh, obstacle right now in today's market. Like that's how I would start my video because you got to remember that you only got a small uh, couple seconds to get someone's attention on why they should keep watching the rest of the video. So if the beginning of my intro is all filled with like, hey guys, I'm Enrique from Paramount Realty Group. And today you're going to hear about a market update. I might have lost some people already right there. You got to get straight to the point and you got to say what like the attention grabber is. And then you go into who you are and, and give the information. So let's say like, um, like the whole credit score thing that Lily was talking about, right? Um, I would start off with like, if I'm like three, two, one, action. Did you know that if you apply for a mortgage with someone else, they're always going to take the lowest person's credit score? Let me explain. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Enrique PRG Real Estate. This is something that I'm hearing a lot from my clients. They're applying for mortgages. And a lot of people don't know that when there's two borrowers, the bank's always going to go with the lower credit score. I just had a client that I spoke to and they thought, you know, because their husband's score was 800 and theirs was 700, that the bank was going to go with the 800 score. Here's why the bank does that, right? What the bank is looking at is there's two borrowers and they know both people are going to be responsible. So they're always, the bank's always going to play in their favor because they're trying to calculate risk. They want to see if you're able to afford the payments. They want to, you know, they're going to take the worst case scenario. I just made that up right now, right? But what you I want you guys to see is that, that I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. No. Can you repeat that? <laughs> but I just I just use the framework, right? I use the framework right now, right? I have an attention getter. I have a topic that is people are actually talking about right now. It's a conversation that you just had with your client. Um, so I'm gonna steal that from you, right? Even though my client didn't tell me that, but your client did. So I'm sure other clients are talking about that. So I'm gonna use that and R and D that right now. But my attention getter. And my opening sentence was, did you know that when you're applying for a mortgage, the bank is always going to go with the lower person's credit score? Because right off the bat, like when someone watches that video, they're like, okay, you got me hooked. Now I want the rest. If I would say, hey guys, today I'm going to talk about, you know, applying for a mortgage. My name's Enrique with Paramount Realty Group. Did you know that when you're applying, right? Like those first five seconds, I might've lost them already. This is extremely, extremely important, guys, is that you just got to give them the freaking sauce right in the beginning. And then the next line would be, hey, guys, it's Enrique, PRG Real Estate Broker by EXP. Like, don't even shorten that, right? I don't even say Enrique Medellin. I may not even say, like, EXP. Hey, what's up, guys? It's Enrique Medellin, your local real estate guy, right? Like, I try to keep that as short as possible. Because I, don't, I want less fluff in there. And I just want to get straight to the meat and potatoes, right? Um, the body, right? You guys just saw me give an example. I start going into my one or two or three points. In that example for Lily's topic with the credit score, there's not three points. There's only one point. It's just really like, this is why the bank does this. And I'm just going to explain really quick why the bank does that. And then I'm going to give a quick story. I had one of my clients that recently applied for the mortgage. They thought this, they thought that. This is something you really need to look out for, guys, when you're applying for a mortgage, because ultimately it's going to affect the interest rate you get. It's going to affect the mortgage payment that you get. And we want to position ourselves to get the best rate, the best deal, right? So if you have any questions about this, feel free to reach out to me and I can get you in touch with my loan officer that can give you the exact strategies of what you need to do to get the best rate. Like that's my video right there is I opened it up. I gave a couple points. I gave a story. And then I just went like why it's important to you, how it benefits you or how it's going to affect you when you're looking to buy or sell. And I'm going through this by giving you an example, right? And then the outro, guys, there's two different outros you can do. There's the basic outro where it's like for a call to action. Does everybody, what's a call to action? My, what's the call to action? You know what that means? You gotta un unmute yourself. What's a call to action? 
Mauricio, call to action. Call to action. Um, I don't know what it means, but I assume it's like, hey, reach out to me if you guys have any questions. Yeah, so it's the action step that you want your the person watching to take, right? What do you want them to do with this information? Do you want them to call you? Do you want them to text you? Do you want them to message you? Do you want them to go to your website? It's what is the action step that you want them to take after they heard this and if they want to take it to the next step, right? So there's the basic call to action, right? Where it's like, hey guys, thanks for watching. If you need anything, feel free to reach out to me and I'd love to chat with you. That's just the basic, like you can use that on any video, anything. Sometimes you may have an offer, right? Like let's say you're talking about discounted properties and you could say, hey, DM me discounted properties and I'll send you a list of discounted properties in your area, right? Now that's like some sort of offer, something I'm offering them to give them. Or hey, if you want to set up a one-on-one -on -one consultation, reach out to me and we'll go ahead and book a time for us to do a strategy session with you. So you're offering them a strategy session. So remember that there's, there doesn't always have to be an offer, but there has to be like an outro or some sort of like, hey, thanks for watching. If you found that information helpful, reach out to me if you need anything. Or thanks for watching. If you want X or Y or whatever I talked about in this video, reach out to me and I'll go ahead and send that right to you. All right. So those are two different approaches that you can do. And they both work depending on what the video is about and what you're talking about. Okay. Um, we're a little over time, guys. Give me five minutes and we'll, we'll be wrapped up. Um, these are the last two points here. So the editing. So this is the part where some people just get in way over their head with like thinking they can't make videos because they don't know how to edit. Remember like the super dope videos that you see that are like drone shots and graphics and all that stuff. Like that is not what we're talking about today. Like, yeah, you can be that eventually, but when you're putting out content, like all the time, it doesn't have to be like super fancy or, or creative like that. It's more about putting a consistent message, right? We're not going just for looks. We're going for impact and value. So at the very basic level, if you have a video, just know how to trim it, right? Like those first couple seconds where there's like dead space in the middle, like all you got to do is hit edit on your phone and you just slide the little toolbar and stop it. This way the video kicks in right when you're talking. At the very end, there might be a few seconds where like it was just dead space after you ended the video. By the time you went to turn off your camera, there's like three or four seconds. Just know to trim it and that's it. At the very basic level, that's all you got to do is just trim the video, which is like super easy. This way the, there's no dead space. It's not the dead space where you're just waiting to talk and there's like four seconds of you just staring and then you go, all right, guys, like, right, like that, that's very basic, right? So if you just do this with your videos, like for some of you guys that are just getting started with video, that'll make your videos just even better because you already, you already position yourself for good lighting. You already checked the audio and then you just trimmed it and now you're going to go post it. Um, the cover, usually when you upload these videos to like IG or YouTube or anything like that, you're able to pick the cover, like what shot people see on your thumbnail. And all you got to do is hit cover and you can slide and you can choose which, which shot they, which shot they see. Like, what do they see when they come to your page? Right. Or what's the placeholder that they see when the video starts? Um, advanced. I'm not going to go into this, but this is like where you want to add things like a song in the background, like just for some music. If you want to have like things popping up or graphics or some sort of background or whatever, this is now getting advanced. But I can tell you right now that doing all these things, it doesn't make your video necessarily better. It might make it look cooler. But if you ain't doing at least the basics, don't worry about the, the advanced stuff, right? As you go, then slowly make your videos a little bit better to fit your style that you're trying to put out there. Very basic, let's keep it simple. Okay, the last thing guys, and this is it, uh, distribution. So we went through the whole, we walked down like how to make the videos, why you make the videos, the lighting, the hook, all those different things. This is now where some people get this part wrong, right? Because you put all that effort with the video. Now, the goal is you wanna get this video out in front of as many people as possible. 
because one video, you can put that on different platforms and get two times, three times, four times, five times the amount of views, all right? So multiple platforms equals more bang for your buck. And here's the flyer analogy. Think about this. Like if you want to go door knock a hundred doors and you have a hundred flyers and you go pass those all out, well, you only had a hundred people see your flyer, right? You left them on a hundred doors. But imagine like if that same hundred flyers, like by you maybe spending five or 10 more minutes, they now appeared on a hundred more doors and a hundred more doors and a hundred more doors, right? And now with that same those same flyers, they were on 500 doors, right? By just doing very little. This is where posting on multiple platforms, that's what that does for you, right? Because you're going to post it on Facebook, you might get 100 views on Facebook. Then if you post it on IG, you might get 100 views on IG. Some people might be the same people that follow you on both, but there may be a different audience. If you now take that post that you did and you share it to your story, now you might get 200 people that seen it on your story. If you do it on your story for IG and Facebook, now you might get another couple hundred people. If you take that video and put it on YouTube and, you know, 50 people see your video on YouTube, that's another 50 people. If you take that same video and you put it on LinkedIn and 100 people see it on LinkedIn, that's another 100, right? So that same video that you did on IG, if you're only posting it on IG and you're getting 100, 200 views, you could potentially get 1,000 views on this video by just posting it on other platforms. So pick and choose which platforms that you're going to use, like your top three. For me, it's Facebook and Instagram and YouTube. I have a LinkedIn. I haven't really been on it too much, but I probably should. I have a LinkedIn. I have thousands of people that are connected with me on LinkedIn. So I'm going to get back to making sure I add that on there. Um, post versus story. This is a lot, of, a lot of questions people ask. Should I post it or should I just do a story? Remember, posts live forever and continue to pay you in the long run. It's like putting money in your 401k, right? You're not going to see it blow up overnight, but it's always going to be there if you continue to put in your 401k. If you, post, if you do this as a post, there may be someone that comes back to your post three months later and sees that. There may be someone that searched and found you because of a hashtag and sees your post, right? So in the long run, Posts are going to continue to pay you. Now with stories, because a lot more people look at stories, they might get more initial views on the story. But then remember, stories disappear in 24 hours. So yeah, maybe you got 200 views, but that's it. It stopped because it disappeared after 24 hours. So what I recommend is you post it on your feed and then you share it to your story so you get the best bang for your buck. So I would post it on Facebook and I would also make sure it goes on my Facebook story. I would post it on IG and then I would also share it to my IG story. Same thing with YouTube. You can post it on YouTube and then I think there's like YouTube shorts where it's kind of like a YouTube story. So this is how you're able to get both. The people who are just only looking at stories and the people who also may come back to you later and look through your feed. Um, the last thing here guys is just knowing that you can do micro content and long form content so micro content is just like short short videos right the one minute the two minute reels um which are great you can also do longer videos that you post on youtube and then maybe you only post a clip of that video on your instagram and you say hey if you want to see the full video click on my youtube link and that's where they can see the full entire 30 minute presentation you did on buying a home in today's market so you can take little snippets and just use those as reels, one minute reels, and then and drive traffic to the long version of that content for those of you guys that want to make longer videos. Let me see if there's anything here. One shot, one kill. All right, guys, I know we went a little bit over, but um, hopefully you guys got some framework today of really what it takes to make some effective videos. I don't expect you guys to remember this stuff overnight. I'm going to take this sheet that I made, the, the Google doc, and I'm going to put it in our, in our Slack channel. I'm also going to give you guys the link to my first video so you can watch it and laugh at me, but I want you to be able to see the progress and the, and the transition. Um, and here's what I want to leave you with, right? At the very minimum, you should be doing one to two videos a week. But don't think that it's going to happen overnight, right? If you only committed to one video a week, there's 52 weeks in a year. That's 52 videos a year. 
If you're in this business for 10 years, that's 520 videos that you put out. Think about that, right? That's you constantly building your brand, creating that consistency. So it isn't like you're going to just by tomorrow, you're like just doing all these crazy amounts of videos, but commit to something, commit to one video a week. That's a short topic, a one, two minute video, right? If you can start there and just build on that and over time, you'll start to see the, the results. You'll start to see your credibility. You'll start to meet people. You'll start to get DM stuff like that. Um, I asked last week for some of you guys to send me examples of responses. Liliana was, she sent me like four or five different screenshots of people who are like, like, they saw her video and then they DM'd her asking her a bunch of questions about that topic, which I know is going to lead to business. Um, so the whole point of guys is create the videos, make sure they're powerful, use some of these steps as the guideline and um, start working on building your brand. Any last, last questions, guys, before we run off? All right. Thank you so much, guys. We'll see you next week. We'll role play the actual video stuff. Thanks for showing up today. Peace.